for chapter seven, lessons one and two on sampling distributions. So uh, the question to focus on as you watch the video is what is the difference between a sampling distribution and a population distribution? Explain uh, the defining characteristics of each, like what makes each. So make sure you look at sample size, number of observations, the word parameter, statistic, and distribution when you're answering that question. So let's first talk about what a sampling distribution is. A sampling distribution is all possible samples of the same possible size uh, from a certain population. So it's like every possibility for a sample size of 20 seniors from the whole senior class. Uh, a sampling distribution would give us um, would give us a distribution that would show us all possible outcomes of sampling 20 seniors, so all possible combinations, which is a lot of combinations. Because there are so many combinations, we oftentimes uh, take a large number of samples and then call it an approximate sampling distribution because we rarely have enough time or resources to do a true sampling distribution, which would be every possible sample of the same size. So keep that in mind as we go. Um, sometimes we'll have a sampling, true sampling distribution, and sometimes we'll have an approximate one because we don't have enough time or resources to actually uh, sample every uh, sample of the same size. So, some key vocab here. Parameter starts with the P. Population. So the parameter is a number describing the population. A parameter could be the true number of people that will vote for Obama in the next election. Oh although he can't get reelected. But let's say they vote for, the, for a certain governor in the next election. A statistic, S, is from our sample. So that's the, the statistic, we use that word to describe our sample, which means we, let's say we asked uh, SRS of 100 citizens of California, and their responses about how many support a certain governor would be the statistic. We use the statistic to estimate the parameter. So we can't ask everybody in California who they'd vote for. So we uh, take an SRS and we look at the statistic we get from that sample uh, in order to estimate our parameter from the population. So remember, parameter, population, P's. Statistic, sample, both start with S. So our population distribution would be the actual values of people from the population. That's what we're always trying to get. Now as data gets more, um, with, with more computing, uh, and more data gathering. We're getting more and more information about the actual population distribution, which is kind of shifting where statistics is and where it'll be in the next 10, 15 years, because we're going to have to have new methods with larger data sets of uh, determining what parameters are. So our population distribution is the graph of the parameter. It's the graph of the true population. A sampling distribution is all values of the the statistic in all possible samples of the same size from the population. So that means all possible samples of size 30. All possible samples of size... So you'll see when you get a sampling distribution what n is. Small lowercase n, which would be the number in the sample. And that sampling distribution is every possible sample size of that value. Now capital N would be the true population. We usually use the sampling distribution to estimate the population distribution. And if we have a large enough sample size, um, and we have an unbiased data and a, a way of gathering the data that's unbiased, then we can come up with more and more reliable methods of estimate, estimating the true parameter that we're looking for. So an unbiased estimator uh, has the center of the sampling distribution that's equal to the center of the population distribution. That just means if we do everything correctly with sampling, we should get um, a mean that's the true mean. So that's our goal, right? We want to figure out what the true value of something is. What's the true average weight of uh, males in California? What's the true number of people that will vote for somebody? What's the true average income or the true average amount of fruit eaten in a day? Whatever you may be interested in, if we carry out, uh, if we have random sampling, if it's an experiment, if we have random assignment, and if we get a large enough sample and we use uh, the right methods and conditions are met, we can have an unbiased estimator that gives us a true interpretation of what the true value is. So a biased estimator, on the other hand, uh, would have a sampling distribution that's not the same average as the mean, meaning something went wrong with the way we collected data, uh, we didn't have a large enough sample size, or conditions weren't met. So a biased estimator uh, does not have, it's giving us a bad interpretation of what the true value is. So. Be familiar with those two words. Not too unlike what we've gone over at the in chapter four material. So variability of a statistic 
is how spread out something it is. Remember variability, variance is a standard deviation squared. So the variability of the statistic, we can look at the variance, we can look at the standard deviation, which is the average distance of each point from the mean. So larger samples will have less variability. They'll tend to be closer to the true parameter. Uh, just by chance and by probability, we're more likely to have a more accurate center. So larger samples, less variability. Um, and we're going to look at some exercises to show us why that is. But think about probability and uh, if, we have, if we pick a sample size of two, we could very easily have picked um, two people or two pieces of data that are far from the true mean, either far below it or far above it. And then uh, we, would, we would have a biased estimator because it wouldn't be giving us a true um, interpretation of what the actual mean is. So we want to choose a statistic with low or no bias. Uh, oftentimes there might not be no bias, but low bias. So minimize bias, minimize the amount of variability. To do that, we want a large sample size. We want conditions met. We want to carry out uh, with an, all of our work with an SRS, if it's an experiment with a random assignment, to let us know cause and effect. The SRS to let us apply it to the population from which it came. So those things are key. So again, this is how we're going to find standard deviation of the parameter uh, for a proportion. And this is if we're using a sample mean. So p hat right here is for a proportion, the sample proportion. x bar is if we have a sample mean. And we'll get into more about what those are. So in lesson two, we're looking at sample proportions. Remember, a proportion is a total of the whole. So a number between 0 and 1, or between 0% and 100%. To denote a proportion, we use p. The p hat lets us know that it is from a statistic. It's from our sample. Uh, when we're trying to make an unbiased estimator of the true parameter, p. Parameter, p. So p without the hat means from the population. That's what we want to know. And p hat refers to the proportion that we got from our sample. Uh, so sampling distribution of p hat describes uh, how the statistic varies in all possible samples from the population. Remember, all possible samples of the same size. So the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is equal to the population proportion p, uh, making it an unbiased estimator of p. That means if we have every possible combination of samples of the same size in a distribution, then our mean will be the, the exact same as the mean of the population. Um, just because that's how it works out if we have every sample and they all average out. So one proportion that's too low will be balanced out by one that's too high. Most of them will tend to be in the middle where the true uh, value of the parameter is. So to find the standard deviation of our proportion, we use this formula, uh, which is the square root of the proportion times 1 minus the proportion over the sample size, the whole square root of all that. So here's the conditions we have to have. We have to sample less than 10% of the population. We've talked about this before. If we sample more than 10% of the population, then these rules break down. Um, so it only works if we have less than 10% of the population. Otherwise, the independence of our sample is compromised. Uh, standard deviation gets smaller as n gets larger. That means um, our proportion will tend to be closer to the mean with a larger sample size. So larger samples have a lower standard deviation because uh, just by probability we're not likely to get a bunch of values that are much less than the mean. We'll tend to have values that are close to the mean and then ones that are smaller will be balanced out by ones that are bigger. And again, that'll happen more when the sample size is larger. So a large sample size is preferable. We're going to look at 30 as a nice minimum for that. When n is large, the sample size, um, our, the sampling distribution of p hat is close to a normal distribution centered around the true mean. So when we get a large enough sample size, we get a normal distribution with, with our um, statistic, our, our proportion from our sample will be really close to the real mean or at the mean. So this is where normal calculations will really come into play and let us help, um, help interpret what the true value of something is. So. We can do this if the normal approximation, if these two conditions are met. So if NP is greater than or equal to 10, and N times 1 minus the proportion is greater than or equal to 10. So a couple conditions that have to be met. Sample less than 10% of the population, and then the, the number sampled times the proportion has to be greater than or equal to 10, and the number times 1 minus the proportion has to be greater than or equal to 10. Basically what this is saying down here is a minimum, our sample size has to be big enough. 
so that we truly capture the proportion. A proportion that's really close to 100% or really close to 1%, we'd have to have a very large sample size to prove that. And again, if we had a proportion that was at 1%, we'd have to have a large sample size because only the probability of picking somebody that um, satisfies that would be 1 in 100. So this is just basically giving you a bottom line for how large the sample has to be. So again, P for the parameter, P hat is our sample proportion. The P without the hat is the true value, the true proportion. And then here are our conditions that have to be met for all of our calculations to be carried out on our sample proportions. Okay, please review the summaries of the lessons in your book. Look over the examples from Chapter 7, Lesson 1 and Lesson 2 for some help with this, um, and example problems especially. And then pause it here to read the multiple choice about Obama's approval rating. Uh, they used an SRS to poll 10,000 people. The approval rating was at 57%. If the actual approval rating was 55% of the entire nation, then identify what the parameter and statistic are and whether the 10% condition is satisfied, meaning sampling less than 10% of the whole population. So look back on the outline in Schoology. Uh, look back in your book and then figure out which one of these five answers is correct based on what the parameter of the statistic is and whether the 10% condition is satisfied.